So the atoms, photons and nuclei level 3 paper. We've got at the start here a list of useful numbers and values. Um, I'm assuming we'll use them pretty early on since they're on the first page um, rather than in a later question. Anyway, question 1, nuclear physics. Fission reactions take place in a nuclear reactor when moving neutrons hit uranium-235 nuclei. In one of the possible fission reactions, remember fission means splitting, like a fissure or a crack opening up, uh, one neutron hits a nucleus and breaks it into krypton and barium of those numbers. A is write a nuclear e equation for the reaction and name the other particles produced during the reaction. Okay, so going into this, we've clearly got our 235 uranium, 92, um, and we've sent a neutron, one neutron hits a nucleus, so one zero neutron. And from this, we end up with uh, 9236 krypton plus 141.56 barium. And there's going to be something else to, um, to make it all add up nicely. So let's, let's, yeah, how do you do this? You count the numbers uh, of the, the, remember, all the conservation laws, the, the um, uh, mass numbers and the um, atomic numbers um, should equal. So 235 plus 1 is 236, so it means we need 236 on the right hand side. Uh, we've actually got with the 92 plus 141, um, that's 233, so we're going to have, we need to add three something else's, and we can't tell anything else at this point. It's three, um, three neutrons or protons at this point, but anyway, 92 plus 0 is 92, uh, and 36 plus 56 is also 92. Um, so we need zero to make it match up. So uh, what we're going to have, um, there's nothing, no particle that has three neutrons and nothing else. So we're going to have three, three plus three individual neutrons of one zero each. Okay, so naming the other particle produced as a neutron. Neutron. Okay, B. If the moving neutron has a kinetic energy, oh, that must be the in input one, otherwise they would assume you could read ahead and find out what the answer is. If the moving neutron has a kinetic energy 7.45 times 10 to the minus 16 joules, show, let's underline that, so we know, show that this energy contributes negligible mass to the mass of the moving neutron. Well, the way forward here seems to be to work out the equivalent mass of that using Einstein's equation e equals mc squared and uh, rearranging that for mass because the kinetic energy um, will be the mass gained once it loses that kinetic energy uh, so um, now I'm, I'm actually that's an interesting one how does that energy relate is it actually giving it mass while it's moving According to that's, that seems to be how it works anyway. Uh, it gives it mass while it's moving. So we want to know whether that energy gives it mass. Uh, that's, that's significant. So anyway, we're finding out that mass from here. We've got m equals the energy we've got above there um, divided by c squared, which is 7.45 times 10 to the minus 16 joules divided by the speed of light squared. Um, and that equals... Uh, 8.28 okay that's not the important bit this is the important bit. times 10 to the minus 33 kilograms so it's a very very minuscule amount so that's the mass that would come from that energy okay so how do we uh, show that it contributes negligible mass to the mass of the movie we have to go back up and look at our mass of a um, uh, of, of the actual neutron itself. So let's go back up to our data that was given and we've got uh, this information here. We've got the mass of a neutron is 1.6749 times 10 to the minus 27. So our, our one down there um, was um, uh, what do we get? Times 10 to the minus 33. So that's six orders of magnitude. That's times 10 to the power of, of six um, difference. 
that's a lot of differences. Uh, a lot of <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a big difference. And that means it's not going to affect this number at all um, because it's just too small. It's like um, a grain of salt compared to a basketball or, or even larger. Um, so, so all you'd have to say that uh, that's you haven't finished the question just by doing the calculation. You also have to say um, this is. We'll put it this way: it's less than the least significant figure, least less than the least SF of a neutron mass. Okay, so if you add it to it, it's not going to change the actual number. Cool. Okay, C. If all the energy released from the fission of one uranium-235 nucleus is converted to a single photon. Calculate the frequency of the photon produced. So the way forward with this one is to, um, I mean, if we work, the way forward is to work backwards. If we start from um, E equals HF, that's what we're going to have to use to find the frequency. So we're trying to find the frequency. H is constant, so we've got that. How do we find E? We have to use from Einstein's equation, E equals M c squared um, and we have c because that's a constant and we're trying to find e we don't know m from m the mass that's the change in mass from uh, the uranium 235 plus that original neutron one zero uh, neutron it's 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 the change in mass from there that's your initial mass so we'll call that m i to your final mass your um, mass final which was the barium plus the krypton plus the three neutrons. So um, I'm not going to do that calculation, but you pretty much just add up all of those masses to find the initial mass, to find the final mass, and then you'll get the change in mass. Um, the change in mass, let's just see, should be 3.067 six, times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. So a very, very small change of mass. From that, we can work out the amount of energy produced, which is uh, 2.7603 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. From that, rearranging E equals HF and putting that energy in, you can get an energy of 4.16 times 10 to the 22 hertz. So that gives you your frequency in the end. Okay, so I'll just write that in here for your reference. 4.16 times 10 to the 22 hertz. Because remember, units very important. Uh, D. Calculate the total binding energy energy of a uranium-235 nucleus. Okay, this is a goodie. Um, what we have to do to get the binding energy, the binding energy is, uh, I'll call it BE just because, the binding energy is going to be the difference between um, the energy of the um, energy of the mass when they're apart um, minus the energy when they're together so what that means is this is the energy of all the protons and neutrons and that's as separate so as individual kind of things, just remember when they're apart they have more energy when they come together they lose energy um, as and they decrease mass and um, this is going to be the energy um, of uh, the um, uranium when they're all kind of pushed in together so what what that's going to be is how, how we do that is we um, take the mass difference so the change in mass between these two situations and we multiply it by the speed of light squared okay there's a little bit of a rough way of doing it you, you don't need to go into that uh, middle step um, but this change in mass between the protons and neutrons um, when they're when they're individuals um, compared to when they're all joined in so that change in mass you just add up the mass for 92 protons plus 235 minus 92 neutrons um, and uh, then you find the mass of the uranium atom all by itself and you should get a difference in mass or remember we call it the mass deficit of um, 
uh, I'll just write it in like this, change the mass or the mass deficit. It's going to be 3.1717 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And then you just multiply it by the speed of light squared and uh, that's that's going to give you the total binding energy. If you wanted the binding energy per um, per nucleon, then you would have to divide that total energy divided by the number of, which is 235, the number of nucleons. Um, so that works out anyway to be 2.8585 times 10 to the uh, negative 10 joules. That's that's the total binding energy. Okay. E. Explain in terms of binding energy why the mass of a uranium-235 nucleus is less than the total mass of its constituent uh, nucleons. Okay, so this is just wanting you to explain the concept of binding energy and where that energy comes from. So, um, the putting it like this, it takes energy to separate uh, the nucleons from each other. In the nucleus, um, this energy uh, is, if you like, stored as mass in the nucleons, so that a part they have more mass than together. Or something to that effect. Um, you can talk, uh, and remember, I'm not sure if I made the link there, but um, yeah, yeah, that's what I have. Binding energy is this mass deficit, but in terms of energy. So the, the actual answer says, binding energy is the energy which must be supplied to separate the nucleus into its constituent nucleons, um, or it's the energy released when the constituent nu nucleons are brought close enough to form a nucleus. As work has to be done to separate the nucleons, their total energy increases, and accordingly their mass will increase due to mass energy equivalence. Therefore, the combined mass of the nucleons in the nucleus is less than their combined mass when they are acting as separate particles. And there you have it.